here we go. All right, today's Zoom call, we're gonna talk about keeping the gut healthy, keeping your gut healthy. And again, <clears throat> we talk to cancer patients about gut health and you have breast cancer. You go, what in the world do I need to know about gut health? I have breast cancer, prostate cancer, whatever. Uh, but it is very important because it is uh, really the beginning of all problems is our gut. One could argue, if you wanted to argue, I would argue the cause that the majority of our health problems begin with the gut. Because our gut, inside our gut, everything that you eat that goes through you is still outside of the body, if you can think of it that way. It hasn't crossed the gut barrier to get inside your bloodstream. It is a tube within your body. So everything's going within this tube. It's still on the outside of your body. So the health of that gut barrier, and we talk about that gut barrier, it is these little individual cells, these little enterocytes that uh, create this barrier that allow things to get through that are supposed to get through. And if that barrier is damaged, it allows things to get through that aren't supposed to get through. And then that ends up causing an antigen uh, immune reaction and causes antibodies to be created against food particles, against chemicals that it should never have been uh, created antibodies, uh, and that can just cause major problems and major inflammation. And that's where we get inflammation in the gut, inflammation in the body, inflammation in the brain, and it just becomes this horrible negative cycle that can cause a lot of problems and can actually lead to cancer. This can actually be a cause of cancer and all sorts of different diseases because it causes basically uh, systemic inflammation. So these commensal bacteria react with butyrate and actually help create butyrate in order to feed the intestinal cells. Butyrate is the main food of your intestinal cells in order for them to be fed and nourished and to stay healthy. So this discussion, we're just gonna concentrate on butyrate. Butyrate is also called butyric acid. Um, it is formed through ingestible dietary fiber. That's why we put a lot of people on sun fiber or sun spectrum. The fiber in sun spectrum and sun fiber uh, is the number one studied fiber on the market. There are more research uh, articles on uh, the fiber that's in that product than anything that exists on the market as far as fiber goes. And it's the best fiber to make the most butyrate. That's why we use it. It ferments in the gut, creates butyrate, feeds your gut cells, decreases your risk the growth of colon cancer because you have a healthier gut, but also decreases the risk of all cancers because inflammation in the gut is going to equal inflammation in the body and the brain, and that can lead to cancer. Increases mucus production, a good mucus layer in the gut to help protect the gut against poisons, chemicals, additives, colorings, everything that's in processed foods that you're eating that decreases intestinal cell permeability. So that permeability, that lack of permeability is what we want. When we have an increased permeability, that's what's called leaky gut syndrome. And that's what allows things to pass through that gut wall that were never supposed to pass through the gut wall. So we want to promote these, what are called tight junctions. The tight junctions keeps those gut cells tight together, keeps the gut cells healthy, undamaged and doesn't allow things to get through that weren't supposed to get through. Decreases luminal pH, so we want that pH of the lumen, that intestinal lumen, to be lower, I mean more acidic, and to stay that way to help continue the digestive process. Regulates Treg cells. Treg cells are your, maybe your, uh, uh, the cells that, that will calm down an immune response. So when I have a hyper immune response reacting to a food or something in my gut, I want that to calm down. Butyrate helps calm down Treg cells. It modulates that immune response. We don't want that hyper immune response in inside the lumen of the gut because that's what's gonna cause problems. Butyrate itself has all sorts of good anti-cancer tumor suppression effects to it. So that's why typically we put 
almost every cancer patient on that fiber to help stimulate natural butyrate production. Now we do have butyrate products now that you can take butyrate itself directly. That's a product called Buterin and also Enterovite, which is um, uh, uh, Buterin is from Allergy Research product. Uh, and then Terovite is a apex uh, energetic product, which is a good source of butyrate just, uh, just to help this production. So it's a huge tumor suppressor in itself, um, and it's a, it's a great way to, to help decrease um, uh, uh, gut inflammation and increase overall health, and de really decrease overall inflammation in the whole body. Now, how do I know if I have leaky gut? How do I know what are some tests that I would do to that would suggest that I have leaky gut? Well, first of all, besides before I get to the test, we could assume if I have any ill health problems that I have leaky gut. So the tests that we're going to talk about are some of the Cyrex tests. This is a Cyrex Array 4 that is similar to the Array 10, which measures many more things than this. The Array 4 measures, I think the Array 4 has just this one sheet. The Array 10 measures uh, about six or seven sheets like this, about 300 different foods. Um, and this is how you can, if you want some evidence uh, uh, of leaky gut, and, and evidence of your leaky gut being healed, and these are the kind of tests that you can run. Now, we don't run these on a lot of people because you could just make an assumption that you do, and it's make an assumption that you always need to work on your gut, and that's a very safe assumption. Now, people that want more evidence, we can certainly run these tests. These are blood tests measuring antibodies to different food particles. Again, our gut health here, back to this slide right here, should not let large food product particles in, and therefore you shouldn't develop antibodies to these food particles. But when our gut is damaged and we have uh, increased permeability, meaning a leaky gut here, so it's letting large food particles in, we'll start creating antibodies to different foods, and you'll have a test that looks like this. All of these should be in the green. Now, I have run tests on people, and these are all in the green, all of them, which is a great test. Then you have to measure some other things to see you know, other damage that might be taking place. And that's these kind of arrays here that we'll get to in a few minutes. But usually if a person has ill health, they're gonna have a test that looks something like this. Now this, this is actually pretty horrible. This is, this is on the worst side of a person's ill health, um, where this is way out of range in the red here. Uh, equivocal is still out of range, but in the iffy side, Green is in normal range. Now you see they have way more, maybe three times as many that are out of range than are in range, which this test suggests this person, should they stay off of the millet? Should they stay off of rice and corn and buckwheat and hemp and sesame and amaranth? The answer is yes. However, just staying off these foods is not going to fix the person's problem. When we have a test, when they're all green and there's just a couple yellows, then the answer is, yeah, if you just stay off those foods and continue what you're doing, uh, they're probably, that person is probably already doing a lot of gut healing. So if they just started staying off those extra little things that are causing inflammation, then their problem would, go, would, would be diminished. Um, that's an easy one to go over with a person. But when a person has all these reds like this, then it's like, oh my gosh, you've just completely destroyed this person's life because now they can eat almost nothing. And that becomes a little uh, problematic and people start throwing tomatoes and stuff like that at me and it doesn't, uh, it's not real great. So the, really the treatment for somebody who's got a lot out of range here is you really have to concentrate really heavily on a gut healing protocol. Um, that's, my, that's the way that I've done it for years. You really hit them hard on a gut healing protocol. Have them stay away from as many of the red things as they possibly can. Don't worry about the yellows to begin with. Stay off as many of these the things as they can. Get on a good gut healing program and see how their symptoms diminish. And then there's two ways to follow up with the person. In three months, you can run this test again, and you will see 
if they stay on the gut healing protocol, the, some of these will be slid to the yellow, some of the yellows will be slid to the green. Um, if they didn't, if, they, if you just stayed off the ones on the red and you didn't do anything for gut healing, quite possibly some of the greens could slide to yellow, some of the yellows could slide to reds. You could get worse. You have to fix the problem. So you have to go back to this and understand that you have, you have these permeability issues in your gut that have to be corrected. Just staying off the food is not going to solve the problem. Staying off the food is going to decrease a source of inflammation. So in a way, it's going to help, but you have to heal those holes. You have to patch up the holes in the dike, um, or you know, as soon as water comes down, it's going to leak right through again. So this is an example, again, of someone with a really bad leaky gut problem. This is pretty bad. You can go further into these and look at each one of these. Cyrex, this lab who does this, has an individual panel on each of these, an individual paper on each of these products. So for instance, uh, it's not on this, this is from uh, Cyrex 10, corn uh, oleosin is a product that they, is a food product that they test for antibodies. And it tells you, it explains what this, what corn oleosin is explains where it comes from, what's associated with, gives you some data, and some known cross-reactions. Now, there's no known cross-reactions for this. But on other things, there are known cross-reactions, like wheat and alpha gliadins has a lot of different known cross-reactions. So if a person had only wheat and, uh, and uh, alpha gliadins positive on their test, then they may also, they want to stay away from that, but they may want to stay away from all these things too. So this just gives you more detail on how to help a person heal that has major gut issues. So it's a really good test to give a lot of data. Um, the problem that people have with it is it's too much data. Um, and it can become extremely overwhelming, and I understand that. And I really need to make a whole presentation just on the tests themselves and how to interpret that, because that might be more helpful um, than this. Just we're just doing an overview here, but this gives you some information on how to start. But really, when you have a test with a lot of reds, um, you really have to concentrate on the gut healing protocol more than just staying away from the foods. There is another panel that Cyrex has that's a newer panel. It's called their Mucosal Immune Reactivity Screen. It's a really nice panel, and it's becoming my favorite panel because it tests all these things. So it's bypassing the food sensitivity, even though it does have some foods in here, and it's jumping more to some of the other markers that would be positive for gut health. And again, this is, again, does a person need to do this test? Uh, the answer is no, a person doesn't need to do this test. Uh, personally, I have never done this test. I just assume because of my issues that I have gut damage and I need to be on a gut healing protocol. So uh, these tests are not super cheap, um, but they do give you valuable information that gives you some direction to go, especially if you can't quite put the figure on what the cause is. When you do a Cyrex Array 4 like this one is, or Array 10, which has about seven pages like this, it could be really nice, especially when there's just like one food or something that you had reacted to that you couldn't figure out what it was. And this is very common with people that were like on a good diet, a, a dairy-free, gluten-free, diet for some time and then we do a test like this and find out that they're reacting to tapioca starch and they're like oh my gosh that's it all my gluten-free products that i eat, no wonder it is now i can put a finger on it now it brings back to their mind that that's why they have a reaction after they eat their gluten-free bread that they eat so that's where this test really comes in handy um but people that have you know cancer or serious disease, is it necessary to do this test? Not really. We're going to treat your gut anyhow. But um, when you start to clear out the cancer and that's calmed down, then it's a good time to do tests like this to get more specific to your diet and to see if there's anything that you're eating that's causing inflammation that's hidden. So 
that's just a brief overview of the gut tests and uh, a brief overview of the benefits of butyrate and why we have you on what we have you on. Um, so we got to keep that gut healthy um, because now many of you are doing much better with your cancer and you're thinking about not wanting to get Alzheimer's disease or not wanting to get Parkinson's or you know any type of early dementia or something like that. Well, it all starts in the gut, I'll tell you that. I'm gonna put together an Alzheimer's protocol um, or a presentation here in the next couple of weeks and it's gonna be mainly on the gut. So we're always keep hounding this issue, but inflammation in the gut equals inflammation in the body and certainly inflammation in the brain. But we're gonna talk about that gut-brain connection in that presentation.